Hello and welcome to Straight Talk, Supply Chain Insights, the podcast for your supply chain leader who is on the go and wants to be in the know. And now, your host, Laura Ciceri. Welcome to Straight Talk with Supply Chain Insights. This podcast series is designed for the supply chain leader who happens to be on the go but wants to be in the know. Today, I'm interviewing Dan Crennan. He is with Alemica, heading some of the commercial efforts. And Dan is coming to the Supply Chain Insights Global Summit. We are currently interviewing all the technologists coming to the summit to gain insights on how they see the future of Supply Chain 2030. Dan, let's get into it. Introduce yourself. Tell the group a little bit about you and what you do at Alemica. Sure. My name is uh, Dan Crennan. I am a key account executive at Alemica. I try and find uh, folks that are interested in uh, digitizing their supply chain, whether on the buy side, on the sell side, or on the quality side. So Alemica answers the three basic questions. Uh, Where's my stuff? Where's your stuff? And is it good? I like that definition. Where's my stuff? Where's your stuff? And is it good? But you also do some sourcing and transportation, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So a, a part of the where's my stuff and where's your stuff, there is a a logistics element. So we have this, uh, we have these ingredients that you can put together to solve a, a number of business problems. Uh, the ones that I see beginning to resonate within, uh, within my patch uh, center around vendor management, uh, vendor uh, managed inventory, and then supply chain quality for folks that uh, that care about that. Well, and we all should care about that, right? I mean, you know, as we think well, about supply chain 2030, it's even more important. But let's just look forward. You know, it seems like, oh, my gosh, you know, 2020 is just a couple months away. And I remember writing about 2020, and I don't think we made much progress in 2020, but the focus of this conference is 2030. So reflect back. What do you think was progress made in 2020, and what do you think 2030 looks like? Well, I see uh, blockchain beginning to take off a bit. Uh, there's uh, certainly a lot of interest in it in the market, and there are trials that are turning into production. So there's there's a lot of good work within blockchain. Um, I also see on the on the 2020 the beginnings of people thinking about uh, 5G and being able to collect data from places that they didn't have before. I've been doing a fair amount of reading about that, and I and I see there's there's lots of potential to be able to gather data in meaningful ways so that people can have insights into what's going on within their supply chain. So uh, I see a combination of blockchain and 5G being very powerful in the market, and the, and the, and the beginnings of that are, are happening now. And what are the process or the value uh, that you're seeing there, Dan? What do you expect will change? Well, I expect people will get more information, but not only will they get more information, um, I think that there's a lot of there's a lot of information out there, but people aren't using it appropriately to make good business decisions. I think that with some of these other technologies that are coming around, um, they'll have a specific goal and and they'll be able to access data in ways that they had not been able to access access it before. So that's where I see uh, that's where I see uh, things going, uh, connecting all these uh, different silos together in a meaningful way so that uh, after making decisions, they can execute against against those decisions appropriately. And today, people can't get to data. So if we could get to data in a meaningful way, that could drive some breakthrough results, right? Well, absolutely. We, we've seen a little, we, uh, for a very large uh, CPG company, we did a, a VMI uh, project and it the, the there was a lot of work on the front end to make sure that the fork, uh, the forecast and the and the production schedules were were um, were were in in place, but after that, from an execution standpoint, we enable the organization to have really great insight into what's going on, and then what they're able to do is trust the system to do what it needed to do. And I think that that's the big uh, that's the big missing point is that people don't necessarily trust the systems that they have in place. And if you can if you can develop trust, if you can verify that it works, and then trust it, I think that um, as I as I said in a recent blog, you can. Uh, leave the hero. You can leave your Superman cape at home. Uh, trusting the system allows you to uh, do what you need to do and then focus on the exceptions. There are a lot of people who like being Superman. In fact, we reward them. <laughs> yes. So yes. how do we get ready? Yes. You know, what do you recommend that people do? Um, I think that people should look at what's uh, most important in their in their business processes and figure and figure out the entire chain of events that have to happen in order to, in order for that to make that happen. So whether it's fill rates, whether it's a, 
uh, quality? What, what are what are the, some of the regulatory issues that you have to deal with? And then you start looking at ways to optimize the processes associated with those. So once you start looking at some of those some of those uh, uh, processes that are uh, very manual, very labor intensive. Uh, there are technologies out there, some of which Lemica can provide to optimize and automate those processes so that you are not having to, once again, uh, not everybody in your company uh, has to wear a, a cape. You can allow the systems to do what they're supposed to do and then start focus on, focusing on the exceptions. So you got any stories to share where you're doing work with clients? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I think the, um, so, uh, you know, uh, from our website, you can see that Energizer is a client there. They have significantly reduced some of their uh, some of their inbound material receiving processes, and what they what the end result is is some reductions in uh, pre uh, pre production inventory. So they instead of having to have uh, lots of quarantines, things uh, materials move directly from uh, from the truck or the shipment that's coming in directly into into production, saving a lot of time and money. Uh, so there's and there's lots of other ancillary benefits that are seen with uh, with some of the systems that we uh, deploy, uh, specifically centered around um, being able to recover costs from your suppliers if they are not conforming, as well as really being able to tune processes based off of understanding the characteristics of the materials that are coming in. Uh, Goodyear is another great example who uh, who have actually embraced the pretty much the entire Alemica suite, and they are an exceedingly efficient organization from a from a sell side, meaning taking orders from their um, uh, from their customers, to the buy side. All the all the all the uh, procurement activities are exceedingly automated, and they have really great visibility into uh, what's going on. So, uh, I would say if you're looking for if you're looking for examples of organizations that have uh, really embraced digital technologies and have embraced um, uh, visibility into their supply chain. Uh, those are two great examples. Thanks for sharing, Dan. Now at the summit, we're going to be talking about, you know, how the channel shifts, how we drive digital innovation, uh, you know, a little bit about manufacturing, procurement, analytics. What should people talk to you about, you know, when they look you up in the crowd? Uh, what's your, where's your head at going into the summit? Well, my head is really centered around automating uh, manual processes. So if an organization has lots of processes that are currently being uh, done with, by people or on paper, we can digitize those processes and make, those, make that information flow electronically. And what that allows an organization to do is really begin to think about how do we optimize uh, production so that uh, if they do open up new channels that require uh, new kinds of uh, that require very much just in time fulfillment. You have everything in place to be able to do that. If you're still working in paper, if you're still working in spreadsheets, these are these uh, these processes are not going to flow very well. And once again, you're going to have lots of heroes within the organization. So thinking about where is where does it make sense to apply um, where does it make sense to apply digital concepts to eliminate manual processes. Awesome. Well, Dan, thanks for joining the show today. Until next time, see you at the summit. I'm looking forward to it. Mm -hmm.